All right, so I'm working on my 12th and final little tiny carving. Um, I am going to record this one in its entirety and kind of talk about what I'm working on when I'm doing it, just kind of babbling, babbling, babbling. So I'm gonna go ahead and start carving on it. This one is a, uh, a spotted moray eel. And uh, this, this piece of wood is a piece of birch plywood. It is half inch birch, birch plywood. Ignore all the noises that are gonna happen in the background. Let's see if I can turn that off mute. I just ran over my toes with my little wheelie chair here. And that didn't feel too good. <laughs> oh, so anywho, all, it's all good. No pain, no gain. That's what they say, right? Yeah, that's gonna that's gonna leave a that's gonna leave a mark. Um, so you'll hear a couple some noises in the background because currently it is raining, and so you might hear some thunder. You'll definitely hear some rain, and you might hear some like TV noises because since it's raining, B is scared of thunder. He's scared of thunder, and he's scared of fireworks and he's scared of anything he basically doesn't understand b is um so he's upstairs with Paige, and Paige is playing legally blonde very loud right now so he doesn't hear the thunder when it happens so but i am just working on this little more evil eel carving and when i'm working on like the face i am basically just kind of tracing out the lines that I've already drawn with the carving tool. And I'm going to use my X-Acto knife and I'm going to put a score mark just on the inside of this line here and just on the inside of that line there. So that when I come with my carving tool up against that line, it's gonna pop right off. Give me a nice clean mark. So there's one and there's two clean marks. And so I wanna define the eyeball a little bit more. So I'm gonna make a couple more marks on this one, on the eye. See, look, define that eyeball a little bit. Just, we're taking off little tiny bits of wood at a time in areas like this to get the effect that I want. And I'm just using, uh, these are called power grip carving tools. And I've got the link in the description for these if you're interested in them. I use them because they fit my hands. Uh, there's other artists who use different tools that fit their hands better. They're also relatively cheap. It's about $35, I think, for a set of these, a uh, set of five tools. They work pretty good. I'm carving really tiny here. And sometimes I like, for the most part, I like to use one mark to make every mark that I'm making. I don't want to come back and recarve a line multiple times because it kind of gives it a shaky feel. Sometimes that's unavoidable if I want to thin out a line. You can kind of see this is a little shaky here. I'm gonna try to smooth that out a little bit, give it that one carve mark feel. But in the face, like I said, I am just trying to uh, follow the, my drawn marks pretty accurately because I want the face to read as clearly as possible. I'm doing a little bit of stuff like on the back of the head. I want to add like a little bit of shadow. So I just, I took a little bits back there to kind of hint at shading. And we're almost done with the face. I don't even, what's this part of the Mora eel called? It's like this little, it's like a little ear hole. I'm sure there's a very scientific name for that, that I don't know. I've always liked more eels. I've only ever seen them in aquariums because I don't go deep sea diving or anything of the sort. But when I'm able to see them in an aquarium, they have a very goofy look to them. I also noticed that they're, their mouths have a very, like a roundness to them. And so I'm gonna grab this tool 
And I'm gonna try to round off these marks a little bit more, just so it feels a little bit more rounded up at the top and less, less sharp uh, mark making that the V gouge will give me. So just round it off a little bit. I'm gonna, I'm gonna smooth that transition a little too. So there you go, that looks pretty good. All right, so now I'm moving down. Well, let, me, let me round this a little better too. All right, so now I am moving down into the body. I'm gonna give it a, uh, like an edge highlight on the bottom here. And then I'm gonna come up from there, I'm gonna add a little bit of shade, you'll see. But very carefully, I'm just gonna, along the whole bottom edge there, I'm gonna just take a little bit. And then from here, I'm going against the grain and I'm just going to pop out little bits down here to add some shade and some shadow to the bottom edge of this more eel. I've got some spots drawn on his back. And I'm just gonna carve up to those points and I'll figure that out when I get up there. It's always good to have a plan, but these tiny carvings, there's not a whole lot of big areas uh, to work with your mark making. So I try to get, and I don't, it's always boring if you just clear everything out 100%. So I always try to take like little marks out of areas that when I can, when it makes sense, and then clear out areas in their entirety when detail's important. On the back of this eel, the detail's not as important, like the, the drawn details, is I think is what I mean when I say that, isn't as important important as like the drawn details that are on the face. So I have a little bit more leeway to use my carving marks to my advantage in these areas because accuracy isn't as important. Now we're getting to an area that's very small and accuracy is a little bit more important back here. So I'm gonna abandon my carving marks a little bit and I'm going to score the top edge of the tail so I don't ruin this top edge of wood. And I'm just going to carve into that top edge here, just like this. Pop, 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 and pop goes the eel. Well, it's really pop goes the, the, the Baltic birch, huh? All right. And I'm gonna continue doing that little little marks being removed from this area here too, but I'm gonna take bigger chunks this time. I'm gonna go deeper into the wood. The V gouge, the deeper you go into the wood, the more wood it removes. Therefore, the more quote unquote white area or non-black area uh, you'll have for uh, something like this where I'll be using black ink. If you're using any sort of colored ink, like reds or blues or yellows, the more you take away is less reds or blues or yellows, so it all depends, and more uh, either paper or in my case, painted wood will show through the more you take away. All right, I'm, st I'm just gonna keep plugging away here around the spots, taking more and more away, but I'm still just using like little little mark making techniques to kind of give the texture that I want and add value on the top of this Mori eel. And I don't want to clear out big, large chunks. Big, large chunks. That was important right there. I wanted the, the back and the head to look like they were connected. So I didn't want a solid line there. I just want that implied line to go across, which I think I achieved pretty accurately. And I'm only work, worried right now about the vertical marks that go across the, t uh, with the contour of the eel. I'm not really worried about separating these spots quite yet, like in areas like that. That's too small for me to get into from this angle. 
So I'm just working against the grain, against the grain, against the grain, until I've got it all out on how I want to get it done. We're almost there. Just moving down the back a little bit. Moving down the back. Taking out little bites. All right. So, got most of that taken out. Looks good. And now I'm gonna start going, and I'm not gonna take a whole lot out this way, but I do wanna take some, some mark making out this way. I wanna kinda of clean up some of the front edges of these spots. I think that looks better when I, when I um, go and carve out the inside of the spots if the front edge is a little clean. Separate those two spots. Just doing, a, right now I'm just doing a little bit of cleanup work for accuracy of my drawn lines and kind of knocking out some of the top areas here um, for a lighter value when I go and paint it. I don't want the uh, it to be too dark up there with too much ink living up at the top of that. I want most of the ink that's gonna be on here towards the bottom of the body of this eel. Cleaning it up. All right, next. It's time to carve out the spots. The grain is going this way on this piece. So I'm gonna go against the grain with the score marks from my X-Acto knife. And that's just gonna give me something to carve up to. And it's gonna pop out the wood. If I go with these little marks um, with the, or, uh, against the grain when I'm carving them out, they'll tear more and I want them to peel more. So that's why I went, I made the carving mark, uh, my score mark against the grain so I can carve with the grain. And that's, you know, you do you, but that's in my experience, that's how it works the best. And I'm just gonna carve them all out from one direction and then I'm gonna flop the eel over and carve out the other direction. Let's see, I'm not gonna force anything out of place yet. I may not have cut the, the score mark deep enough or carved to it far enough, but I'm just gonna see what I got. Kind of come back to everything and clean things up at the end of the carving process. It's looking pretty good in areas, and I don't want everything to be a uniform circle either, because this is an organic creature. So I want the textures to feel organic. If everything feels like super uniform and super clean, then it kind of loses its organic feel. Whew. All right, so I'm taking a step back and I'm kind of crossing my eyes a little bit to kind of look at the values that, I'm, that are being created. And right now I'm just kind of cleaning up little areas that I don't like as much. Most of them are living on the front edge of uh, the, the carved circles. The back edges, I think it le leans to value um, and like tricking the eyes at this size. Uh, if I leave it not carved up as much. Ooh, there's a little bit of thunder there. Did you guys hear that? A little bit of thunder. We've got a storm rolling through. A little thunder. All right. So finishing up this eel, I'm just carving the top edge of uh, this eel's fin. What is it called? Fin. If was, this was a dinosaur, it might be called a sail. Um, I'm gonna call it a fin though. But I don't know if they have control of it in the way that like other animals have controls of their fins. So maybe, I don't know, what is this called? Just a frill? The eel's frill? Not quite sure. So I'm just scoring there. And that's once again, that's gonna allow the wood to pop off instead of tearing off when I go and carve. And I'm just gonna make little 
carving marks. They kind of look, I'm, I'm trying to be wavy when I do this. So it looks like it's blowing in the, the ocean water, like just flowing like a mane, like a lion's mane, I guess. But this is an eel's fin. So just, just little tiny marks just to give a flowing appearance. So as we're nearing the end of this carving, uh, I would just like to, you know, thank you for watching this and thank you for uh, always for clicking on my videos. It's very much appreciative, appreciated. And hopefully you enjoyed this one as much as you enjoyed all the other videos. And hopefully if you are a wood carver yourself, if this was helpful to kind of hear some tips and tricks, uh, carving small is difficult. I would also like to say that I've been carving for about 13 to 14 years now. And I didn't even attempt to carve birch until about 10 years into that process. Um, and it is very difficult for me still to do. It is not an easy thing to accomplish. And especially it's not an easy thing to accomplish in under 20 minutes. But uh, just keep at it. And hopefully um, this helps with some tips and tricks. So thank you guys for watching. Hopefully you like this little eel. And I'll see you all later. Thanks. Bye.